Hi, my name is Megan Wallendahl. We're here in central Wisconsin at Wallendahl Supply. Uh, we are a 3,200 acre farm in the central sands. We farm grains and vegetables, corn, soy, and a variety of vegetables. We are out here today in the field with our precision pace setter drone, kind of giving a demonstration and a talk on what we use it for. What we use our precision drone for, this was our first season with it, we <laughs> use it for, uh, in the beginning of the season, for stand count and to look at herbicide and weed pressure. As the growing season progresses, we use it to assess plant health or field health in terms of nutrient deficiencies, a pest pressure, disease pressure, weed pressure, and we could react to those within the season. Um, with a favorite rate for irrigation, a uh, spot spray on pest or disease control. Um, we also use our drone as a check and verification on our variable rate irrigation that we run on all of our center pivots here at our farm. Um, and it can verify if our prescriptions for the irrigation are applying too much water or not enough water. So what you can see with the overall picture of the entire field is um, a lot of pattern recognition. And we can overlay that with some of our soil maps to see if there's if it relates to the EC zones or management zones on our soil maps, or if it is uh, an anomaly that's not related to that. For us with uh, scouting, you could always be doing a scouting pattern that misses a deficient part of the field. What we used it for um, on one specific field, uh, there was about a trend that half the field was uh, deficient in nutrients. It was after we scouted and did tissue sampling that we, it was, uh, we found a nutrient deficiency. So we did a variable rate fertigation on it that we wouldn't have been able otherwise to specify without the NDVI image. And after uh, the first image that showed a deficiency, eight days later, we flew again and it showed um, a nice evenness across the entire field. Right, so these NDVI images that we get uh, to use in season really is a predictor of the yield maps you could get at the end of the season. So what we see in a yield map of very deficient areas, um, several ton loss on our forage corn, silage corn, we can treat in season like this half the field that was deficient or behind. Um, it showed on our yield maps it was still behind because we did not continue with the variable rate fertigation program. We still saw a loss of about an, a ton and a half per acre on the half that was deficient. Uh, but if it wasn't treated with variable rate fertigation, we, I think we would have seen a lot more loss. We have some control fields. We, we see that. I just haven't verified with our harvest data yet to verify that difference. Going into drone technology isn't always cheap. Uh, so one of the things we looked at before we purchased it is what we expected to get out of it on a farm uh, is a return of investments. Uh, this came in twofold. One of the things that we expected was a decrease in cost due to a more precise application of where we're putting nutrients on the field. And the second, which is directly related to that, is an increase in yield um, by increasing or reducing the, the loss in the field that we're that we're having due to whether it's disease, nu nutri nutrition, or any kind of insect pressure. Uh, we, are feel, we do feel like this year that we did have a uh, direct correlation with increase in yield due to the NDVI images. Um, and it could be anywhere from $5 an acre on soybeans to $20 an acre on corn. Uh, this still has to be gone through each year and, and, and truthed out to make sure you are truly getting these these increases, but with the information that it provides us, it allows us to really uh, more accurately uh, manage our farms based on what's going on and what the crop is demanding at different stages in its life cycle. What I see with UAV technology is it really is tailored to how it's going to be used uh, based on each individual farmer's needs. Is uh, Currently in our farm, we're using it to supplement our other practices or other technologies or other 
uh, geo-information systems that, that give us information. We're pairing it along with our soil maps, along with our irrigation practices and our, our planting maps to help us create a more unified vision of what we want and how we can manipulate the, the crop to give it the best chance for success. As a standalone tool, it can give you a health check, but what's really the strength of it is when you're pairing it along with your other decisions uh, that allow you to be a more adaptive farmer and to get the best potential out of every single acre of land. For us at looking at a drone, we wanted a UAV that we could fly over our irrigation systems and we could fly low enough and slow enough to capture those images, which led us away from a fixed wing drone. I think a bigger issue of choosing which drone is choosing which um, data system you want to use. A lot of drone companies offer that where they do the stitching, you upload the data to them and you download the images back. Out here in the country, we our upload and download speeds are are very slow. Uh, we would still be uploading and downloading the images from the season. It, it's uh, a little impractical for us with the slower internet speeds to do that kind of system. So we went with uh, a package where we own the software to stitch and create the NDVI images. For someone getting into it, you need to look at the time it would take. If you do have the speeds where you could upload and, re and to do the up upload and download and you may be a single or two uh, man or woman operation, maybe that's a, a good system for you, but for us on our farm, uh, owning the data and processing the data ourselves was very important, so we went with that system. Uh, it, it does take time to do that. I was able to do regular management practices with flying our precision pace setter drone and doing the stitching and uh, image rectifying, but it did take, um, let's say I would have to devote about a half a day's worth of time for probably around 400 acres or so to be able to do that. I think the other thing to remember when getting into the drone is, is rather than focusing on what each drone can do for you, you need to figure out what you're expecting to get out of the drone. Uh, this drone is the right one for us. It fits us very well. It has multiple purposes, but it may not be the right for every farmer. Uh, you have to define what you want before you really go into looking for researching a drone because it can it can drastically change the price that you're looking at, whether it's a $2,000 drone or all the way up to a $100,000 drone, depending on the camera work and the technology built into it along with the software. Uh, but by doing that, you can really narrow in on which type you need and how it's going to be useful and what you're going to be getting out of the information that it gives you. For us, in finding the specific drone, our goals were a scouting purpose, a tool to add to our scouting. Um, another larger one was the NDVI images. That was very important to us in getting a drone with that capability so that we could um, build in-season harvest predictor maps for us because we don't always get a harvest yield uh, map from our harvester. So this is that's why this specific drone and the capabilities were important to us in addition to checking on our variable rate irrigation practices and spreading um, 